Chatfield School is now in session. Welcome to our weekly class where the Chatfield team and the top experts in the industry will cover the most important topics you need to know as a chatbot builder and marketer. I'm Andrew, Chatfield's head of video production. I am Buena, Chatfield's content manager. Once upon a time, most children's books were dull and boring, so kids really weren't reading as much as they should have been, until one day, Dr. Seuss came along with books like Cat in the Hat. He created these colorful, wild characters and these imagined fantastical worlds that really captured kids' attention. And he was so good at doing this that through his stories, he improved the reading and comprehension skills of kids all around the world. What's more, he sold tens of millions of books in the process. So it's easy to say that Dr. Seuss was a raving wild success. And if you want your business to be as successful, then you need to take Dr. Seuss's advice, which is to tell more stories. Any more facts and figures alone, they're not going to cut it. You need to tell stories because they're 22 times more memorable than facts alone. Stories allow you to emotionally connect with your audience, your prospects, your customers in a very unique and special way. And through these stories, you can win more sales, brand loyalty, and most importantly, repeat business. And I know brand storytelling might seem a little abstract or flowery, but trust me, there is a proven scientific formula to it. So stick around and we'll tell you exactly what that is. But first, Boyana is going to tell us a little bit more about what's on tap for today's episode. Well, Andrew, today we have so much on our plate. We have a panel of expert storytellers. Uh, one of them is has 20 years of speech writing experience for CEOs and even an USA senator. Another has written stories that have raised millions of dollars for children's cancer research. And another has used video storytelling to generate over a half a billion dollars in sales for their clients. Imagine that. Now, before we start, I would like to discuss with you two housekeeping things before we run into uh, tips and tricks from our guests. Number one, the structure of this episode will be slightly different. There are so many great examples of brand storytelling out there, so we wanted to show them, not just to talk about them. And also after uh, each brand storytelling tip from our guest, we'll watch a short video example that shows their advice in practice. And number two, you'll get so excited about this. I feel it. Uh, we're giving away a special gift to one lucky viewer today. Uh, at some point of this episode, we'll give you super secret keyword mm. for a chance to win post that keyword as a comment on this video and we will randomly choose the winner from those comments on now our next episode next week we'll announce who gets the prize so join us then to learn if you want now let's meet our first guest all right, so our first guest today is actually not one guest, but two. So that's history in the making here at Chatfield. We've never done a joint interview with a married couple before. And their names are Douglas and Lisa Marie Hatcher. They are the co-founders of Communicate for Impact, which is a brand storytelling training company. Now, Douglas is actually the person that we alluded to earlier. He has over two decades of speech writing experience for CEOs and even a US Senator in Washington, DC. He's also the former Vice President for Executive Communications at MasterCard, which is pretty impressive. And I guess you could say there was a little bit of a credit card rivalry in the Hatcher household because Lisa Marie also for over a decade led teams at American Express. But after all of that, they decided to leave the corporate world and teach business owners how to use brand storytelling to win more customers, increase sales, and deepen brand loyalty. Now, our first tip comes from Douglas, and he says that when you're writing stories for your business, use something called the once upon a time structure. And it's especially useful when you're writing your brand's origin story. The once upon a time story structure is the same one that 
the film company Pixar uses for its animated films, films like Toy Story, mm -hmm. Finding Nemo, Finding Dory. It, it's great. We love it. Let's start. It has six parts. Part one, Once Upon a Time. Part two, And Every Day, Until One Day. Because of that, because of that, until finally. Now let's apply it to a business storytelling situation. Let's explain how this works. Once upon a time, this is the way the world is. This is the current state of things. And every day, this is the recurring problem that your customer or your consumer is facing until one day. This is when you come into the picture. This is when you as a business present your solution or your answer to your customer's problem. Because of that, that's the first payoff. That's the first benefit. It's really the brand promise that you're offering. Because of that is the continuation of that benefit. It's, it's really doubling down on the brand promise until finally. This is the resolution of the problem. It's the better state. It is what we call the new happily the ever after. after. So maybe you're wondering, who is Mrs. Meyer? And is she even a real person? The answer is yes. Mrs. Meyer's Clean Day household cleaners were inspired by Mrs. Thelma A. Meyer, an Iowan homemaker and mother of nine. Years later, one of her daughters had an idea. It came to her as she walked down the cleaning aisle, eyeing all the products with their conventional ingredients and sterile smells. There's got to be a better way, she thought. Right then and there, she made a decision. I'll make cleaners that smell nice, like my mom's garden. But they'll work like the absolute dickens on daily dirt and grime. No gloves or mask required. And so she did. She named her products after her very practical mom and the common sense value she passed along to her kids. And now, everyone who uses them discovers that a clean home can smell as good as it feels. I know Andrew loves this brand because he's obsessed with their lavender hand soap. Ooh. But another reason to love them is that they know how to do storytelling. This ad fits the six part story structure Douglas mentioned really nicely. And we can do a little exercise and go through it and see uh, those points. So the first one was that she noticed the most cleaning products didn't smell nice. Second, she noticed this every time she shopped for them. Number three, one day she noticed, well, she can make a change. She decided to make cleaning products that smell nice. Number four, the smell is the first benefit. Number five, the second is that they still get the job done. And six, the resolution is that a clean home can smell as good as it feels. But next, Lisa Mary had another storytelling tip for us. Uh, know your audience, target customer, so you can tell stories that resonates with them. And they're inspired to buy something because it evokes a common response or a gut reaction in them as a group. And that group may have a common value system or share a common passion for something. For example, I think if you ask a group of people who own Harley Davidson's, um, they may say that they share the love of the open road or the feeling of freedom that they get when they ride their Harley Davidson. Um, and I'm sure if you ask the same question to uh, those who purchase Mrs. Meyer's cleaning products, um, they probably say that they're buying them because one, they're getting great, you know, a great cleaning product, but they also value the fact that they're botanically based products and they're good for the environment. Keep scrolling. Be generous with likes. Order food. Skim headlines. Set three alarms. Check followers. Order shoes. Use AutoSend for flowers. Use AutoSend for birthdays. Tabs open. Curtains closed. Use headphones. Run in gyms. Order cars. Keep scrolling. Stay in bed. Order food. Keep scrolling. Don't go outside. Don't go outside. 
Don't leave the phone behind. Do not engage your heart, your mind. No eye contact. No sync. Don't blink. Don't think. Don't ever let yourself feel this alive. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. I was just busy practicing my deep breathing skills like that mysterious robot lady just told us all to do. But seriously, do you see how powerful appealing to those shared values as emotions can really be? For example, Harley Davidson appealed to autonomy, rebellion, just the idea in general of breaking free from the rat race, and that stuff obviously works. Even for me, you know, by no stretch of the imagination am I Harley Davidson's target customer, but even for me, that ad struck an emotional chord, right? So. To the team who worked on that commercial, bravo, you guys deserve an award. And you know who else deserves an award? Like this one right here? Douglas and Lisa Marie, because they have so graciously shared with us their brand storytelling tips. Now, if you want even more business and storytelling advice, you should definitely check out their new book called Win With Decency. We'll link to it in the description below. And who knows, maybe if you stick around, we may or may not be giving away a free copy, so stay tuned for that. But before we go to our next guest, we have a question for you in the chat. So we'll be back in 30 seconds. chocolate company for example mm. um i would focus on the values that uh, chocolate can bring for example the value of togetherness um how delicious desserts you prepare with other people can bring you together so for example baking chocolate cookies with your kids or baking chocolate pie for a new neighbor uh, so instead of, for example, focusing on how ch chocolate can taste and how good it tastes and things like that, like, come on, we all know that chocolate tastes amazing. Mm. So let's focus on values that product can bring. Our next guest is Nina. She is the founder of Communication Rebel, which specializes in storytelling for social good. Like mentioned earlier, Nina worked with one of the biggest childhood cancer research foundation in the US uh, because of the emotional and compelling stories she wrote. The foundation exceeds its fundraising goal, getting one step closer to finding a cure. What amazing woman! As if that's not impressive enough, here are a few more fun facts about Nina. She lived in five countries. Her storytelling experience started in journalism and she used to work at a radio station and a newspaper. And she has a miniature schnauzer named Neo after the Matrix character. And this Superwoman shared uh, uh, her first piece of wisdom for brand storytelling, and that is take a human approach. So for me, the human approach means that you can clearly articulate your why and you build your brand storytelling campaigns around your why um, and not necessarily your what and your how. Because if you can really engage with people on an emotional level and on a level where they feel seen and understood, they're more likely to not just become a one-time client or a one-time customer, they will become a customer or a fan for life. And so that's really important if you want to connect on a human to human level and have this be a relationship just like you would 
um, approach relationships with people outside of business. We got no free pass. The door wasn't open for us. We had to knock it down. Everything we have, we've earned. We earn it when you feel your heart race, when your eyes go wide. Because more powerful than respect given is respect earned. The unmistakable Lexus IS. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. So obviously in that commercial we just watched, Lexus is really selling the values, the deeper emotions associated with the brand. So if somebody sees that ad and they feel like they work hard, they earn what they have, then they're gonna feel understood and in turn, that's gonna create a deeper emotional connection between the viewer and the brand. And that's exactly what you want, right? At the end of the day, owning a Lexus isn't just about owning a car, it's about owning a symbol of success. It's about owning a lifestyle. So you could imagine the commercial would look a little bit different and have a different vibe if instead of that Lexus sedan, you know, racing through the mountains and dodging rocks, it was a Toyota <laughs> minivan, right? It's a completely different lifestyle. Now, here's another brand storytelling tip from Nina. She says that when you're telling a story on behalf of your brand, you need to stand for something. You don't just wanna be vanilla. Uh, I call this the vanilla approach. Um, which, sure, everybody likes vanilla, or almost everybody likes the vanilla flavor, um, but by appealing to everyone, you're really not standing out. You don't stand for anything, you are not unique, really, you are not memorable, so a great story is not afraid to take a stand and to have a strong message. So I would definitely encourage you to stand for something, to have a strong message, to have a strong vision, and to be passionate about solving the problem that you're solving for your audience. So don't be vanilla, pick a strong flavor. Hello, I'm a Mac. And I'm a PC. I'm afraid to ask. Well, I was sitting on my desk. Yeah. Someone walked by, carelessly tripped over my power cord, yanked me straight down to the ground. Bam! Yikes. MacBooks come with this power cord that connects magnetically, so when it gets pulled, it just pops right off. Everything's just kind of thought out, you know, like the tiny built-in ice I can. My life is flashing before my eyes. Okay. I see a sunset in a field of beautiful wheat. Isn't that your screensaver? Yeah. I don't know about you, but I love these commercials, these Apple commercials. Uh, I think I watched like 15 right now, <laughs> just one after another. Like I, I adore this. Uh, this is classic Apple commercial. Um, Apple is here standing for simplicity, as we all know, uh, and they differentiate themselves from a clumsy, clunky, complicated PC. And this goes back to what we mentioned earlier, like know your audience, what your audience wants. Simplicity comes at a premium price with Apple products. Premium is another one of its brand values, like just for, just like Lexus. Uh, Apple customers are okay with that. Like they actually welcome it. They, they are willing to pay more so they don't have to deal with certain things that PC users needs to deal with. <laughs> uh, there's an exclusivity to owning Apple products that makes them even more appealing. And last piece of wisdom from Nina, make your customers the hero of the story. So every good story has a hero and the hero is overcoming certain challenges. But the thing is, your brand or you yourself as a brand are not the hero, your customer is. And so you are supporting the hero in their journey of overcoming a challenge or of trying to find a solution for their problem. So that's very important as you're thinking about telling your story, making the user the hero of your story. Um, a good example here is Apple, because when Apple is showing photos or videos taken on the latest iPhone in their marketing campaigns, and they're taken by 
iPhone users, then they're making the users the hero of their story and they're inspiring others to, um, you know, to be creative and to really um, go out and be a photographer, be a videographer, because they have this little device that turns them into this amazing creative um, photographer or videographer. So Apple is putting the users and the customers uh, into the center of their storytelling. Berlin, 1987. My father was a guard on the west side of the Berlin Wall, while another man guarded the east. Eventually, the wall came down. But even after moving away, my father carried a piece of it with him. While I grew up, it lingered over all of us, a barrier between him and the rest of the world. I decided I would help by taking him back to Berlin to show him the beautiful place it had become. When we arrived, the stranger who answered the door became familiar. The guard who patrolled the opposite side of the wall now welcomed us as a friend. After that, things were better for my father. Airbnb. Belong anywhere. I don't know about you, but... Whenever I watch this commercial, it it makes me super emotional, <laughs> and I, I really love it. Um, I like how daughter, the Airbnb customer, is the hero here. Uh, she helps free her father from his past, and what I like also is that Airbnb it's not selling themselves like in hard sell way. Uh, the story just feels natural and heartfelt and it's it's really a great example of brain storytelling. Thank you, Nina. Thank you for sharing your expertise with us. Um, you guys, if you want to help building your brand through storytelling, reach out to Nina and communicationrebel.com. You can also find it in the description. And... Now is the time for secret keyword. This episode secret keyword is chat in the hat, like cat in the hat from earlier episodes. You know, chat in the hat, but for chatbots, chat in the hat. Never mind. <laughs> you just type that in the comments below and we'll announce a lucky winner on next week's episode. Oh, I, I forgot, I forgot uh, a word. Uh, you'll get a free copy of Win with Vacancy, the book written by, of course, Douglas and Lisa Mary. Are you typing? Mm-hmm. Yay. Uh, let's take a break now while you're typing all your comments. Um, quick, ses quick session in the chat. We'll be back in 30 seconds. final guest for today is someone I'm very excited we're going to host. Uh, it's Theron. Uh, he's president of Herman Brothers, which is an iconic video advertising agency. Um, if you haven't heard about them, uh, I don't believe you because you definitely saw the Squatty Body ad. <laughs> it's like, I think it's my favorite ad of all the times. Uh, they're also known for 
Purpuri purple mattress and click funnels commercials so uh, let me know which one of those is your favorite one like we mentioned at the beginning of episode they've used these video stories to drive 500 million in sales for their clients so they definitely know the the thing uh, some other fun facts about Taren uh, he has seven seven kids he likes to longboard and he speaks russian even i don't speak russian so good for you uh, and when he's not doing those things he's coming up with entertaining and irresistible with the story ideas and he says that when you're coming up with a brand story run it by your customer first to see how they react pay attention to their body language what are the points that the person perks up what are the points that their that their eyes light up what, what are the points that their that their face kind of grimaces or they, they they pull back because whether, whether it's price or because you know something was said that was um, a little bit off from what it could be if you can capture those that can help you both understand what to put into a brand story as well as what to take out of a brand story Hinge wants you to meet someone great. Even if it kills us. Because when you find the real thing, you won't need us anymore. Which is kind of the point. Hinge, the dating app designed to be deleted. So whether it's your brand's origin story, a customer story, or anything in between, you need to convey that aha moment to your audience. Kind of like when a magician, abracadabra, performs a trick. And that's exactly why we played that super creative hinge ad for you. Because you could just imagine that people's eyes light up when they hear that tagline, the dating app designed to be deleted, right? It's just thought provoking. Like why the heck would a company want me to stop using their service? But I know that all this talk about storytelling and values and emotions it might seem overwhelming or abstract. So here's one actionable way for you to start with brand storytelling. And that's by creating mini video ads, 15 to 30 seconds in length, that communicate one message to your audience. They tell just one little snippet, maybe one uh, little emotional piece or one, one value prop or, or one uh, a feature that's, that's really important, or maybe one review, and yet they, if you were to watch, look at them together in the aggregate, they feel like you're, you're absorbing the whole story. I browsed eight sites for divorce attorneys today. I browsed eight sites for divorce attorneys today. My login for everything is pauline at paulinefu.com. I love working with you. Me too. Red heart emoji. Pink heart emoji. Yellow heart emoji. Blue heart emoji. I hate Lee though. Puke emoji. Puke emoji. I am currently reading an article titled 10 ways to keep sweaty hands from holding you back. My home is in 1,000 feet. My heart rate is currently 150. 151, 152, and back down to 150. On March 15th at 9.16 a.m. I purchased prenatal vitamins and four pregnancy tests. <laughs> Another Apple ad with all this free promotion, Apple should really be sponsoring Chatfield School at this point. Hmm. Or at least me and Andrew and Yelena and Angela and all of the other people. Seriously, that commercial was a fun example of a mini ad, even though it was a, a little longer, it focused on just one value proposition privacy. So that was Therin, the president of Harmon Brothers. Uh, his team can help you become a video storytelling pro in 14 days. Just go to harmonbrothersuniversity.com and 
that's it. Now we'll break one last time to catch up in the chat or the comments. Then Andrew will wrap up with our takeaways from today's episode. We'll be back in 30 seconds. So if you want to become a brand storytelling rock star, then here are three tips for you. Number one, sell the emotion, not the product. As humans, we're emotional creatures. We buy things because we want to feel something or experience some deeper emotion. You don't just buy a luxury sports car, for example, to get you from point A to point B. You buy it to feel the adrenaline coursing through your veins as you accelerate or to convey status and success. So when you're telling stories about your brand, make sure to sell the emotion, not the product. Number two, portray your customer as the hero. The best stories out there have some hero who saves the day, and it's no different with brand storytelling. But make sure that you're portraying your customer as the hero, because if you make your brand or your product the hero, your story is probably going to feel forced or unnatural or salesy. So think of it this way. Your product should be like the spinach that Popeye the sailor eats to give him strength. It helps the hero along their journey, but it doesn't steal the spotlight. And number three, make your customers feel understood. This is just basic psychology because all of us want to feel understood and have our belief systems validated. So as a brand, you can appeal to this human need by reflecting the values of your customers. For example, if you sell hiking backpacks, you need to empathize with your customer's sense of adventure. Maybe your tagline at the end of the story could be, do more than just exist. Again, effective branding and brand stories sell a lifestyle, not just a product. So start applying these brand storytelling tips today so that you can grow your brand like I grew my hair. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same place, for another episode of Chat Fuel School. Thanks for attending class today at Chat Fuel School. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for even more actionable and educational content. And don't miss out on next week's class. Click the link in the YouTube description to get a reminder when we go live. We'll see you again next Friday at 8 a.m. Pacific. Happy botting.